I left a camera in the baby's room and uncovered my husband's dark secret. On a warm summer evening, I decided to install a camera in my baby's room, hoping to capture her adorable nighttime antics. Little did I know, this seemingly innocent act would reveal a dark, hidden secret about my husband that would shatter our idyllic life forever. The night started like any other. The soft hum of the baby monitor was the only sound breaking the stillness of the house as I put our daughter, Lily, to bed. Alex, my husband, was downstairs, working late into the night as he often did these days. His new job as a software developer was demanding, but he was determined to make a good impression. After tucking Lily in and turning on the new baby camera, I made my way back to our bedroom. The camera was a gift from my sister, who swore by its ability to monitor her own children. I figured it couldn't hurt to have an extra set of eyes on Lily, especially since Alex and I were often exhausted from juggling work and parenting. As I lay in bed, scrolling through social media, I decided to check the live feed from the camera. I watched Lily's peaceful slumber, her tiny chest rising and falling rhythmically. I smiled, feeling a wave of love wash over me. But then something caught my eye. The nursery door creaked open slowly, and Alex stepped inside. I was puzzled. He had never mentioned going to check on Lily during the night, and it seemed odd given how tired he always was. I watched as he approached the crib, his movements slow and deliberate. He reached down, and for a moment, I thought he was just adjusting her blanket. But then he started to whisper. Curiosity peaked. I turned up the volume on my phone. His words were barely audible, but I could make out a few phrases. You're safe. They can't find us here. I'll protect you. My heart raced. What was he talking about? Who was he protecting her from? The next morning, I confronted Alex. Were you in Lily's room last night? He looked surprised. Yeah, I heard her stirring and went to check on her. Why? I hesitated. You were talking to her. Who are you protecting her from? A shadow crossed his face, but he quickly forced a smile. I guess I was just half asleep, talking nonsense. You know how tired I've been lately. I wanted to believe him, but something felt off. Alex had always been open with me, and this sudden secrecy was unsettling. Determined to get to the bottom of it, I decided to keep watching the camera feed at night. Over the next few weeks, Alex's nightly visits continued. Each time, he would enter Lily's room, whisper strange reassurances, and leave. The more I watched, the more I realized that this wasn't just sleep-deprived rambling. There was a pattern, a ritualistic quality to his actions. I needed help. I reached out to my best friend, Jenna, who had always been my rock during tough times. Over coffee, I poured out my concerns, hoping she could offer some insight. This is really weird, Jenna said, frowning. Have you tried talking to him again? Maybe there's something he's not telling you. I have, but he just brushes it off, I replied, frustration creeping into my voice. I don't know what to do. Maybe you should dig a little deeper, Jenna suggested. Check his things, see if there's anything that might explain his behavior. It felt wrong to snoop, but I was desperate for answers. That night, after Alex had gone to bed, I crept into his home office. I rifled through his desk doors, feeling a pang of guilt with each item I touched. Just as I was about to give up, I found a small, leather-bound journal hidden beneath a stack of papers. My hands trembled as I opened it. The entries were written in a hurried, almost frantic script. They detailed a life I didn't recognize, filled with names and events that were completely foreign to me. There were references to a group called The Guardians and repeated mentions of protecting the innocent. They found me again. I thought we were safe here, but they never stopped searching. I have to keep Lily safe. She's all that matters now. My mind reeled. Who were these people? Why was Alex so afraid of them? I decided to confront him the next day, armed with the journal. When morning came, I waited until Lily was down for her nap before approaching Alex. I held the journal out to him, my heart pounding. Explain this. His face went pale as he took the journal from my hands. 
He flipped through the pages, his expression a mix of fear and resignation. I didn't want you to find out like this, he said quietly. Find out what? I demanded. What's going on, Alex? He took a deep breath, sitting down heavily on the couch. It's a long story. Before we met, I was part of a group called The Guardians. We were dedicated to protecting people from things most people don't believe in. Dark forces, supernatural threats. I stared at him, incredulous. You expect me to believe that? I know it sounds crazy, but it's true, he insisted. We swore an oath to protect the innocent, to keep them safe from these dangers. But I wanted out. I wanted a normal life with you and Lily. So I left. But they don't let you just walk away. They've been hunting me ever since. Why didn't you tell me? I asked, feeling a mix of anger and betrayal. I thought I could keep you safe by not involving you, he said, his voice breaking. But now they're getting closer, and I'm scared. I don't know what they'll do if they find us. I sat down next to him, trying to process everything. It was all too much to take in. What do we do now? We have to leave, he said, determination in his eyes. We need to go somewhere they can't find us. I have a few places in mind, safe houses from my time with the Guardians. It's our best chance. The next few days were a blur of packing and planning. We decided to leave under the cover of night, hoping to throw off anyone who might be watching us. As we drove away from the house that had been our home, I felt a mixture of fear and sadness. Our lives would never be the same. We drove for hours, heading towards a secluded cabin deep in the woods, it was a place Alex had mentioned in his journal, a safe house used by the Guardians in times of danger. As we arrived, I couldn't help but feel a sense of dread. Would this really keep us safe? The cabin was small, but well-stocked. We settled in, trying to make it feel like home, but the tension was always there, an undercurrent of fear that we couldn't shake. Alex was constantly on edge, checking the perimeter and reinforcing the locks. One night, as we sat by the fire, I decided to ask him more about the Gordians. What exactly did you do in this group? How did you end up involved with them? Alex stared into the flames, lost in thought. It started when I was in college. I met a professor who was deeply involved in the occult. He introduced me to the world of the Gordians. At first, it was fascinating. We were learning about ancient rituals, protecting people from things that shouldn't exist. But then it became too real. We were fighting things that defied explanation, risking our lives to protect others. He paused, taking a deep breath. I saw things that would haunt anyone. But the worst part was the constant danger. I wanted out, but once you're in, it's nearly impossible to leave. I thought I could escape by starting a new life with you and Lily. But they found us. I reached out, taking his hand. We'll get through this together. We have to stay strong for Lily. Days turned into weeks, and we settled into a routine at the cabin. Alex continued to be vigilant, while I tried to keep things as normal as possible for Lily. But the sense of impending doom never left us. One evening, as I was putting Lily to bed, I noticed something strange outside the window. A flicker of movement in the trees, my heart raced as I watched, trying to convince myself it was just an animal. But then I saw it again, a shadowy figure moving through the woods. I rushed downstairs to find Alex. Someone's out there, I whispered urgently. He grabbed a flashlight and a knife, his face set in determination. Stay here with Lily. I'll check it out. Fear gnawed at me as I watched him disappear into the darkness. Minutes felt like hours as I waited, clutching Lily close. Finally, Alex returned, looking shaken. We need to leave. Now. What did you see? I asked, my voice trembling. It's them, he said, his eyes wide with fear. The guardians. They found us. We grabbed our bags and fled into the night, driving aimlessly until we found another safe house. This one was even more remote, hidden deep in the mountains, it was clear that our lives would be a constant game of cat and mouse. As we settled into the new safe house, I felt a sense of despair. How long could we keep running? How could we ever feel safe again? 
One night, as I lay awake, I heard Alex talking in his sleep. His words were frantic, desperate. I have to protect them. They can't take her. I won't let them. My heart etched for him. The weight of his past was crushing him, and it was taking a toll on our family. The next morning, I decided to take action. We can't keep living like this, Alex. There has to be a way to end this. He looked at me, weary and defeated. I don't know how. They're relentless. Maybe we need to confront them. I suggested. Face them head on. Find a way to make them leave us alone. It's too dangerous, he said, shaking his head. You don't know what they're capable of. But we can't keep running forever. I insisted. We need to find a way to make them understand that we're not a threat. That we just want to live our lives in peace. Reluctantly, Alex agreed. We devised a plan to contact the Guardians and negotiate a truce. It was risky, but it was our only hope. Using an old contact Alex had from his time with the Guardians, we arranged a meeting in a neutral location. It was a secluded clearing in the woods, far from any prying eyes. As we approached, my heart pounded with fear. What if this was a trap? What if they had no intention of letting us go? We waited nervously until a group of figures emerged from the trees. They were dressed in dark clothing, their faces obscured by hoods. One of them stepped forward, and I could see a flicker of recognition in Alex's eyes. Alex, the figure said, his voice cold and commanding. You've been a thorn in our side for too long. I just want to protect my family, Alex replied, his voice steady. We're not a threat to you. We just want to be left alone. The figure regarded us for a moment before speaking again. The Guardians have rules for a reason. You broke those rules when you tried to leave. But perhaps there is a way to resolve this. He explained that the Guardians valued loyalty and secrecy above all else. If Alex could prove his loyalty by completing one final task, they would consider letting us go. It was a dangerous mission, involving the retrieval of a powerful artifact that had been stolen from them. Reluctantly, Alex agreed. He knew it was our only chance at freedom. We returned to the safe house to prepare, knowing that the stakes were higher than ever. The next few days were a blur of planning and preparation. We studied maps, gathered supplies, and formulated a strategy. The artifact was hidden in an old mansion on the outskirts of a nearby town, guarded by a rival group that had stolen it from the Guardians. As we approached the mansion, I felt a mix of fear and determination. This was it, our chance to finally break free from the shadow of the Guardians. Alex and I moved silently through the mansion, avoiding the guards and searching for the artifact. We finally found it in a hidden chamber, a small ornate box with intricate carvings. Alex carefully picked it up, and we made our way back towards the exit. But just as we thought we were in the clear, we were confronted by a group of armed guards. Hand over the box, one of them demanded, aiming a gun at us. Alex stepped forward, his expression calm. We don't want any trouble. We just want to leave with the artifact. The guard sneered. That's not going to happen. In a blur of motion, Alex longed to the guard, disarming him and knocking him unconscious. I grabbed the box and we sprinted towards the exit, dodging bullets and narrowly escaping capture. As we drove back to the meeting point, adrenaline coursed through my veins. We had done it. We had the artifact. But would it be enough to secure our freedom? When we arrived, the guardians were waiting. Alex handed over the box, and the leader examined it carefully. You've done well, Alex, he said finally. You've proven your loyalty. So you'll let us go. Alex asked, his voice tense. The leader nodded. You have our word. You and your family are free to live your lives. But know this, if you ever cross us again, there will be no mercy. We left the meeting, feeling a sense of relief and exhaustion. It was over. We were free. As we returned to the safe house, I realized that our lives would never be the same. The experience had changed us, but it had also made us stronger. We had faced unimaginable danger and come out the other side, united as a family. In the days that followed, we began to rebuild our lives. Alex found a new job, 
one that didn't involve the dark secrets of his past. We moved to a new town, far from the memories of the Guardians and the constant fear of being hunted. Lily grew up happy and healthy, unaware of the danger that had once threatened our family. And though we never spoke of the Guardians again, the bond we had formed during that time remained strong. Years later, as I watched Lily graduate from college, I felt a sense of pride and gratitude. We had faced the darkness and come out stronger for it. And though the past would always be a part of us, it was the future that we looked forward to, a future filled with hope, love, and the promise of a new beginning. Our story was one of fear, determination, and ultimately, triumph. It was a testament to the power of love and the lengths we would go to protect our family. And as we moved forward, we did so with the knowledge that no matter what challenges lay ahead, we would face them together.